questions for Chris, don't forget them. Bring them out later. So, uh, Lee, if you'd like to uh, take over. Um, let me introduce you to Lee. Lee is Director of uh, Learning and Development for SSP, which you may not have heard of the company, but you will have heard and used many of their outlets, which uh, because they provide catering um, outlets like uh, upper, uh, upper Crust, um, Millie's Cookies, all these sorts of things in air airports and uh, railway stations around the world. So you'll be... <laughs> Absolutely. Um, Lee, Lee's going to give us uh, a, a, a case study which shows how he's been able to apply some of the principles which Chris has just been talking about. So thanks, Lee. Well, I guess I'm the other lemon, I guess. Uh, if yours was Dumbledore, my philosopher has to be Yoda. I mean, what a great MD specialist. I learn what you have learned. Do or do not, fantastic. Um, hello, uh, I am Lee Sheldon, Director of L&D for the SSP Group. Uh, I'm here today because I'm normally where you are, and when I'm sitting where you are, I'm kind of in this for one reason, great neat playroom. What ideas can I nick? What inspiration can I get? What can I learn from that particular presentation? So maybe you're going to nick something from me, maybe maybe not. Hopefully you will. Um, if anyone wants to come and sit, uh, speak to me afterwards, absolutely fine. Um, SSP, anyone actually heard of us? about to faint from the mouth. No, we are very good at keeping very, very quiet about who we are. Our philosophy is all about giving excellent food because that's what we do. We have a passion for delivering quality food in airports and railway stations around the world. Now, we had a couple of the brands that we operate. We also operate other people's brands, which you probably will know. And MS Simply Food, I think, is a brand that you'll be very familiar with. Any airport or railway station, particularly us, they want to work with MS. Burger King, Starbucks. To name but a few, uh, Coulier and Caviar House, quite an obvious one. Give them any spectrum. Pasty shop, like the average one, let's say. So we operate a lot of brands. And our philosophy, therefore, is that we need to have individuals who have a passion to serve the travelling consumer. Our tagline, if you like, is to be the food travel experts. What does that mean? Well, yes, we need to provide good food. But secondly, we need to know about the travel location we're in. So if you say, how long does it take to get from Terminal 1 to Terminal 2? Where are the nearest ATMs? Where are the restaurants? I don't get a cab into town. We should know that because we want to be the food travel experts. And we need to have environments that connect. Now, what I mean by that is some of our units are as big as this room, restaurants. Some of them are probably about as big as this room. Some of them are probably about as big as this. So we have to consider how do we get the learning and the development offer into a unit that's that small compared to one that's that big. The bite-size approach becomes not just in time, but physical bite-size as well. Now, we operate around the, the globe. And one of the key things that we were interested in around e-learning was that scalability approach. If I look at the UK market, which is the biggest individual market that SSP operates in, it's very easy to pull people together for the traditional learning that Chris would have been talking about in a classroom, in a workshop environment. When we think about our business in SSP America, flying managers hundreds and hundreds of miles to get together for a training program is less cost efficient and, quite frankly, has never been happening. So we needed to think about how do we offer a learning development solution that's both cost-effective for today, but also thinking for the future. And SSP America is one of our biggest growth businesses. Small at the moment, but boy, have we got big plans for that market. Asia Pacific, another huge, huge market for us. Again, six key countries uh, incorporated within that. We need to think what tools can we provide that are scalable, that doesn't require people to fly all around the world to bring that training program. 30,000 staff around the world. Think about that challenge that Chris mentioned. Who do, you, who do you provide training for? The bulk, the many, or just the people at the top? Probably one of the biggest of the things that we've learned in the last two, three years um, from a number of sources. Uh, Burger King is a brand that you'll all be familiar with because we operate in the, in the UK and other parts of it. They did a survey. They spent tens of thousands of dollars on it. And that's probably prompted me over the past two minutes. What do you think is the biggest single factor that affects the revenue, the profit, rather, of a restaurant. The biggest single factor, Chris. The weather? No? The biggest single factor that affects the revenue, the profit, sorry, of a restaurant. No? No? All good answers, no? Turnover? No? No? Happy staff? No, but it all links to it. No? It's not as obvious as you might think. It's the length of service of the restaurant manager, the person in charge, because that links to lower waste. It links to lower employee turnover. It links to happier staff, better customer service. And they worked out, I think it was between 18 and 24 months, was the optimum period when the restaurants were most profitable. If the 
manager there for was the most important factor. What do you think is the most important factor for whether or not the manager stands or not? Recognition of company's investment, absolutely. The key person who delivers that was their line manager. And what we realised is that we are not investing in that specifically role. I call it the manager or manager. You might call it district manager, journey manager, ops manager, whatever. But it's that person who manages other managers we were not investing in. And we saw the Academy Live, which is the tool we developed with the working manager, as a way in which we, how we can begin to reach that population in the world. Uh, these are some of the countries and uh, sites that we're operating. Again, just to give you a sense of the scale of the organization and therefore the complexity, when you run other people's brands like MS and Starbucks, you have to deliver their training as well as our own. And when we run our own brand, we obviously have to develop that from scratch. The business, as I said, the big, biggest part of it is in the UK, but it's a business that's growing and some of our key markets are also some of the largest geographically. And as I said, we had to think of a way that we could provide L&D to those individuals in the country across the globe. Uh, the brand, very quickly, just really to try to give you a sense of the different categories that our business operates in. So one of our unique selling points is why work for one brand when you can work for them all. So if you work at the Café Manger, no offence if anyone's been to the Café Manger, it's a great, great brand. But once you're bored of it, you leave the company and go somewhere else. With us, you can say, well, I you know, bought the Café Barney and now I want to do fine dining. Or now I want to move into Pure Retail and Connect. Or now I want to go into um, a quick service restaurant, casual buying. So there's lots of different categories. And again, we had to find a tool that we could begin to touch these different people. The LD strategy, well, enhanced people capability, there's a shock. I mean, who hasn't got that as part of their key driver? Really, the key, though, was, was understanding the knowledge, skills, and behavior to drive internal promotions. It's a business that's growing, and our big focus was how do we get people who are team members into super senior roles? How do you get people who are supervisors into management roles? And how do you get people in management, unit management, into multi unit management, those nine business managers? So that's been our focus. So when determining our LD strategy and identifying a tool like the Academy Live, that was the emphasis that we put on. How can we help people get through that transition and become future managers in our business? I'm also a great believer in empowering people. Um, many of us clearly are LD professionals in the room. I'm fed up of hearing, I only learn, I only get development when I get sent on a course. That's absolute rubbish. We all know that. But what we had was a culture that says, here's a list of 10 courses, I need to go on each of them, tick the box, and once I've done them, then I've been trained. Well, that's, there's some elements you have to do, there's some mandatory, there's some knowledge-based health and safety stuff. But actually, the true learning and development doesn't happen in a classroom. It has a place, but it's a blended approach. And what we wanted to do with the Academy Live is say, you know what, you own your training and development, particularly at that manager of manager population. We're not going to be pulling you out every five minutes for cost reasons and some practical reasons, but we need to provide you with tools and then follow-up processes to help ensure that you're using them, to help ensure that you maximise your learning, learning and development potential. My role has, was recently changed from being just in charge of the UK now to being responsible for the whole Irish national group, and this consistency point was critical. We've got, in many cases, very little offer for our management development in some of our markets. It's focused around team members and basic operational stuff, and then you have the talent management at the top. So you have this big bolt that Chris was referring to that had no development. And we wanted to achieve consistency. Now, consistency doesn't mean it's exactly the same in every market. Complicated businesses, businesses that we've acquired as a business to grow, you can't just take the program that's used in one country and drop it in. But the philosophy that says we want programs that help you move through those levels is non-negotiable. How you will deliver it and the method by which we do so clearly needs to um, be adapted to the market. And once again, the Academy Live has given us a tool to help you to do that. Fundamentally, we also wanted some transparency. Not just it's all in paper, it's all in workbook, hidden away in a cupboard. We wanted line managers, wherever they may be, to be able to see this and managers of their managers be able to go in and see and actually take some ownership to say, let's look at your PDP. What kind of things are on it? Well, that's interesting. You're focusing on customer service. Fantastic. But what about control of those? And what about sales? How are you going to drive sales? So it gives that ability for people to see it. At this point, I just want to um, touch upon some of our key elements for trying to engage with people. 
There was a strong business rationale around this drive to improve internal succession. And in terms of the internal external split, there were about 60% external management appointments, 40% internal. That's crazy. For a business of our nature, it should at least be half and half for frontline management. And we actually were striving to achieve a 60-40 in favor of internal management appointments. So this idea of any time, anywhere, we are living with the digital natives. They are using their Blackberries, their iPads, their iPhones, whatever. They want to better learn and access information when it's suitable and convenient for them, not when we've sent them on course. It shouldn't just be about the workshop environment. We wanted to involve live managers. This is one of the big, when we did research, one of the big things that people have said to us in the organization. When Richard goes on a course, I kind of don't know too much what's going on. Now, I have a responsibility when Richard comes back to sit down and find out what his lessons were, what he's going to better implement, how I can help. But I'd like to be more involved in the process. I'd like to better see and touch and feel some of the content. Pathways is a technical term that the working manager used for really learning a subject in its entirety. Now, they have subjects such as finance for non-finance managers, so a great one. What we've do, done is create our own, based around those succession pieces that I mentioned. So we have programs called Pathfinder, become a secret manager, Discovery, become a, an assistant manager, Discovery Plus, a unit manager, Pioneer, become a multi-unit manager, and Evolution, become a regional director. So it's those stages that we have developed over the last two and a half years that we wanted to build in to Discovery, uh, to the Academy Live. You will use this. This is how would you like to access the learning development now and in the future? And more and more, it's coming via e learning, via technology things. Webinars as well, it's not just about e learning courses. So, just going to show you a quick video clip before I can get this technology to work. We talked about engaging learners. One of the things we didn't want to do is just send out an email and say, The Academy Live is now launched. You know, click here. So, we sent an email, but the moment you opened it, you saw a little presentation just to give people a sense of something different, something that was going to be um, unique. Let's see if this works. We have sound. Engaging, isn't it?
Now that's certainly got a reaction from our people that, well, this looks different. This is not what I've seen before. This is not what I would have expected. Um, we made it mandatory so that it was part of the discovery program. So if you go for discovery, you want to become a manager, you have to use the tool to complete your personal development plan, which is online, anyone can see. We've got our little Academy Lives, and I appreciate you can't see this, but it's Academy Live app. If you go onto it, you could be updating your action plan on your iPhone, on your laptop. The line manager can go in and look at Rich's action plan on his phone, on his iPad, what it, on his laptop, whatever it might be. We had to find ways to engage with people. That video and putting all of that together cost less than 800 pounds, which is relatively cheap, I thought, and said we're getting out the message in a different way. Because I don't know about you, but we're great at sending out PowerPoint presentations, drawing little leaflets, etc. We need to do things a little bit differently to get people engaged. This is some of the screenshots that we had, and you would have noticed some of the key messages. Take charge of your own development. Anytime, any place, anywhere. Some of the real virtues of the site that we absolutely wanted to sell. The discovery was one key element. So if you like, you had to use it. It wasn't an option to go through that program. Now we're about seven months into using the Academy Live site. People have graduated from the discovery program. And I'm a great believer in learning outcomes, not inputs. So I love to know that people enjoy the program. But what I care about is how many people graduate, and more importantly, how many people actually become managers? Because that's what matters, not if they liked the program. Critical to know it, but what's the output? The key thing is, how many of them continue to use Academy Live when they don't have to? And the MD of TWN said to me, watch those people. Look out for those people who continue to use it they are high potential. They're the people who actually are showing they're going above and beyond what they need to do, and they're continuing to learn. They understand that I need to keep growing, and they're going to keep using the tool to do so. The second piece I mentioned was the competency framework, and you saw a tiled image there of our eight competencies. So where am I now? We click into it. Like most companies, we have a competencies network profile that says you are competency level A. It shows me what I should in terms of behavior. Great. What does that mean? And I get better. We then have content linked specifically to each of our eight competencies. How do we get better at managing change or influencing people? It might be a podcast to listen to, a video clip, a book review, an actual e-learning course. There's a whole range of content depending on your learning style that you can get engaged with. And then there's the follow-up pieces with members of the L&D team. One thing, uh, unlike Chris, and I'm pleased to say my organization, we haven't actually shrunk. My L&D team's grown. We have 12 people, and part of their role is to mentor and coach, if you like, the people on the discovery program. So there is the follow-up. And that, I, key, I think, is another key point. If you just say, here's a website, have fun, bye. And I think you know, the learning is still going to probably log on once or twice and potentially they will tailor off. So because there is this contact with them to see what are you learning, how is it impacting what you do on a day-to-day -day basis, there is more of an emphasis. If they know there's going to be some kind of follow-up, there's probably a little bit more likelihood that they will, in fact, um, use the tool. The key outcomes that we've had is that the workbooks, which were paper-based, have now become online. And you can complete those online, mobile, as I've said. What people have really said is they like the ability to go do it anywhere. And managers in particular say, I can just, when I've got five minutes when it's convenient to me, I can go in and see how many people are doing. I don't have to rely on them bringing their workbook into the office, the office into the unit, the restaurant, or they've left it at home. I can see it any time. The personal development plan it's no longer just a piece of paper that you could fill out at the beginning of the program. <coughs> I don't know if you've ever found that, it's just chucked in a drawer. A lot of performance reviews, so chucked in a drawer, get them lost. It's a living document. They update it every single month, and it's part of the review process that we have. So engaging with them and making sure it's a tool that they can use anywhere when it's convenient to update was really important. I forget the most recent stat we've had, but it's around 65% of access to the Academy Live is actually from non-SSP PCs. So we know people are accessing it the majority of the time at home, on laptops, on phones, whatever it might be. And that really puts to me that it isn't just about work saying, go on a course, or go and sit by a computer for an hour. People are actually doing it in their own time. Now we want to balance that, because we don't want to say, you now have to do all of your learning outside of work, because that's not work-life balance. That's not what we want. But it's interesting to see that people are choosing to access the site through their own um, tools. In terms of cost reduction, um, just one thing to touch upon there. In the UK, when we first launched the site in May, it was about how can we reduce potentially, if we don't need an, uh, an off-site course, that will also save travel costs, logistics costs. But in the 
USA, we had no management development offer at all. So how do we put in the most cost-effective offer? Because they wanted an offer, but they didn't have one in place. So we couldn't say it was going to save you money. It's going to cost money in terms of investment. But I, I don't use the word cost. I use the word investment all of the, all of the time. So what investment are we putting in? And then how cost-effective is that compared to having lots of workshops and flights and everything else? Driving the consistency, as I mentioned earlier, between countries is important as a strategy is to say that we want these key development programs in place across all the markets. So I'd say some of the key tips are it's definitely about engaging your learners, but identifying who you want to focus on and make sure that all of your communication is very targeted. We focused on the discovery population, becoming assistant managers, and also our manager of manager population. So you, know, you have your performance reviews, you talk about competencies, and then you go, well, what do I do to get better? Now you provide me with access to the material. We <coughs> recently worked with a company called Hemsley Fraser to bolt on to the Academy Live 80, if you like, more typical e-learning modules for everything from communication skills, time management, you know, the usual stuff. That's now built in. As far as the user is concerned, I'm using the Academy Live. The fact that behind the scenes, you're actually going to the Hemsley Fraser demo site is completely irrelevant. As far as they're concerned, it's all part of the user experience. And we are constantly looking to see what we can add onto the site to add new content and new ways of learning to people. So who are you going to tailor it to? Who's going to be your core audience? Think about the key messages, how you want to get it across. Use the most engaging ways you can. We're doing lunch and learn sessions in the office. So literally half an hour, have a sandwich, we'll do a demonstration and show you a particular function of the Academy Live. Workbooks, tests, whatever it may be, that may be useful to you. We're also using webinars. Again, people are remote. They can't always get into the office. So our manager and manager population, let's, say, let's do webinars. Great. In fact, we can even use tools such as iPads now to get onto WebEx. We can do pretty much anything. Um, I think that's really all I wanted to say, because really we'll obviously give you a good 10, 15 minutes for some questions, um, either Chris or myself. So I think uh, our colleague here is going to facilitate that.